great wet barnyard off of the wet Long Island Sound. They're not perfect ovals like the egg in the Columbus story. They're both crushed flat at the contact end. But their physical resemblance must be a source of perpetual confusion to the gulls that fly overhead. To the wingless, a more arresting phenomenon is their, their dissimilarity in every particular except shape and size. So there's two islands that look like eggs off of Long Island. This is not true. There really aren't those, but um, as Scott Fitzgerald said that there were for this case and that they look almost exactly the same. I think it's interesting that he said they look like crushed eggs. Um, I would definitely make a note about that, that and I don't know exactly what I'm going to say about it yet, but I would still make a note about it because it's a little bit odd. Um, I lived at West Egg. The well, less fashionable of the two, so I was wrong. I think I said he lived in East. He lives in West. Though this is a most superficial tag to express a bizarre and not a little sinister contrast between them. My house was at the very tip of the egg, only 50 yards from the sound, and squeezed between two huge places that rented for 12 or 15,000 a season. So if you're curious to see how much money that is in today's money, there's um, an inflation calculator that's, I think is actually called like West Egg or East Egg um, inflation calculator, which I use for lots of things, but I just think it's interesting that it has a Gatsby reference on that. Um, remember that he paid like 90 for a whole season, $90, and this is 12 or 15,000. It's a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, the one on my right was a colossal affair by any standard. It was a factual in imitation of the Hotel de Ville in Normandy, with a tower on one side, spanking new under a thin beard of raw ivory, ivy, and a marble swimming pool, and more than 40 acres of lawn and garden. It was Gatsby's mansion, or rather, as I didn't know Mr. Gatsby, it was a mansion inhabited by a gentleman of that name. My own house was an eyesore, but it was a small eyesore, and it had been overlooked. So I had the view of the water, a partial view of my neighbor's lawn, and a consoling proximity to, of millionaires for all for $80 a month. So $80 a month he gets to live in this really rich community. Across the courtesy bay, the white palaces of the fashionable East Egg glittered along the water, and the history of the summer really begins on the evening I drove over there to have dinner with the Tom Buchanans. Daisy was my second cousin once removed, and I'd known Tom in college. Just after the war, I spent two days with them in Chicago. And I went ahead and ended it there because I wasn't quite sure how long I wanted to go with this. So you're going to have some time. Um, but I do want you to think about, there's some other things I want you to think about when you're doing your annotations. And uh, one of those is our essential question. I'm going to go ahead and stick out, stick with the essential question that we used last year. And that is, what are the effects, uh, what is it? Hmm. How do we adapt in an ever-changing world? That's what it is. So uh, we're going to stick with that because it worked really well with Gatsby. Um, and I want you to think about that as you read, because you know you're going to have to write a paper at the end, and it's going to answer the question, how do we adapt in an ever-changing world? And so, how do these characters adapt? Maybe you're not going to know exactly which way you're going to go as you read uh, with your essay, but you can definitely start thinking that way. And I want you to think about the figurative language as you're reading, not wait till the end and then go back and look. Think about it as you're reading, because it really adds a different layer to reading. And I know that some of you are like, I hate reading. I don't want to read ever. Um, but you will read. <laughs> it's part of life. There's words everywhere, whether you really notice it or not. Um, and being able to read critically and understand what you're reading is a really big deal. And it puts you way beyond people who don't care and never learn this kind of stuff. Um, so think about that as you're reading. Um, Make sure you make marks as you're reading. You're like, oh, you know, this would definitely go along with that question. How are these people adapting or not adapting? Um, for instance, right away, we see that our narrator, who is Nick Carraway, 
he didn't really adapt very well when he came back from war. And he acknowledges that, that he loved fighting in the war and he really didn't know how to readjust himself to normal life when he came back. So he just picked up and moved away. Is that a good way to adapt? We don't know yet. We're four pages into this basically. But that's one person right there. We already could focus on Nick Carraway. I don't know if that's what you're going to do, but it's definitely something you could start thinking about. Thinking about And lots of different figurative language, some vocabulary in there that maybe you weren't aware of yet. Um, notice that the narrator here, Nick, um, is speaking in first person. He's using pronouns I and me and we. Um, and he does that probably to include you as the reader, as a character in this story. You are a participant in this story because he's telling you the story, um, of the great Gatsby. Um, the way that this is written is the language is a little bit lofty. Don't let it weigh you down. It's not quite Shakespeare level of vocabulary, but it's not of mice and men either. And um, the figurative language isn't quite as um, over the top as it is in Fahrenheit 451. Um, but one of the reasons that we have you read so many different things is to see different writing styles, different authors, different stories. Um, Great Gatsby is referenced all over the place. There's a Family Guy version of The Great Gatsby. Hold off on watching that though um, because it's going to give you some spoilers. So, um, But definitely at the end we'll check that out. It's probably not school appropriate though so I'll have to <laughs> look at it before I show it to you. Um, but you know there's references to Gatsby all over the place. There's references to Of Mice and Men. There's references to Fahrenheit 451. Um, Shakespeare. I try to really show you the <clears throat> what I feel like some of the most important pieces of literature. Um, so I hope that you'll take that seriously that I've definitely put time and effort into choosing this book for you. Um, I didn't just choose it because somebody told me to. I chose it because I've it's a tried and true novel. So um, when we get the books in, when we start reading, I hope that you'll take it seriously that you'll be engaged in our discussions. Your classes are really small, so it's gonna be really important that everybody is engaged in uh, the discussions and ready to go for that. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'm guessing you don't have questions, or if you do, you're not gonna ask me right now. Um, but hopefully this gives you a little a bit of idea of what I'm looking for in your annotations. Um, again, it's not going to be exactly like mine because you're not me and your thoughts are not going to be the same as mine, but that's why we have discussions so that if somebody has a cool thought, which you guys always do, you always give me something that I hadn't thought of before, um, that you can add it to your own annotations. So I hope that you have a good rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.